Yeah. Welcome back to another episode of Who is going to speak at our conference in Salt Lake City, Utah? And we have a very special guest, my dear friend, our dear friend, Lance Aust. Um, sorry, oh, Lance. <laughs> sorry, Lance. I wanted to call you Allstead for a second. Uh, Lance Allred is here with us, um, and I should know his name. I introduce him on our podcast every week, so I don't know why that's a stumbling block today, but... Um, so welcome back. We're gonna we're gonna um, talk to Lance about um, what he would like to speak about. Kind of give you an introduction to some of his thoughts and ideas during uh, the conference. He's gonna he's our keynote speaker. He's gonna speak on day one. Um, Christy Foster is with us as always. Uh, Christy, how are you today? I am great. Thank you. I'm excited to hear what Lance has to say and what he's going to share. I know he has written a fair amount of books and has knowledge that people really enjoy listening to and learning from him. Yeah, I think his uh, his newest adventure is fascinating. I, I was hoping he'd talk a little bit about his uh, newest adventure. I think it's um, quite a remarkable um, in terms of how we think of archetypal patterns, mm -hmm. and, uh, Lance is gonna uh, Lance is gonna talk about the archetypes and how they manifest and how they come out and um, what faces they show. Lance, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, guys. Thanks for having me, and I'm really looking forward to this event in October. Um, this is a nice uh, deviation from my normal keynote structure, but it's leaning more into stuff that I'm actually passionate about, which is the archetypes. And with my hearing loss, um, recognizing body language, you know, I would used to call just characters or patterns in people, but now I know we call them archetypes that transcended culture, playing basketball on every continent around the world, that I recognize people moving and speaking in a similar way, even though they've never met my cousin back in Montana, they're moving just like them. And recognizing that they are channeling, you know, more Saturnian energy and someone else may be more Mars or Jupiterian. And so, it's important to know, leaning into what your request was for me to talk about my recent experience as I was a firekeeper for a Sundance up in Canada. I've done that a couple of times now. That we can always strive to be enlightened and awake, but at the end of the day, we're still human. Mm. And Archetypes is how the universe communicates with itself through the human condition. It's just like math is a universal language, archetypes are a universal language. And it is this millennia old song and dance between archetypes that continually happen with each other, continually trigger. But I do feel that those dances are evolving. They're maturing, those dynamics are maturing by how quickly are we able to recover? And so recovery time is important that, yes, we can do all the work we want. And I've been doing a lot of work in archetypal research and coaching people in archetypes. And I think we make the assumption that because I'm doing it, I'm always on high alert and I'll never be caught in my own shadow and I'll never be spiraling out. And something happened at the Sundance where I was reprimanded for a faux pas mm. um, and it brought up a lot of my past basketball experiences where I would at first be welcome into a team but then eventually if something was going wrong or whatnot or we started losing a couple of games the coaches would begin to kind of shift their dynamic with me and really try to really hammer me into the system um, whereas I who possess a very strong magician archetype, you can see my horse trophy right behind me. I'm the 6'11 guy that won the horse championship at NBA All-Star Weekend in 2008, shooting trick shots. That I can see your system, I can see what it provides, but there's also times where you, everything collapses and you still have to go make a play. 
Um, but these coaches would be so nervous about losing control that they wouldn't allow us the rain to go out and do our magic. And so if you added the money I'm owed from around the world from teams that never paid or honored their contracts or cut me without paying me, it's about $900,000. And so there's a lot of, there's a lot of resentment there, looking back on all of it. And so at the Sundance, an initiation happened, a reprimanding, and my shadow came up. It was like, oh, great, am I going to be dismissed from these guys too? Are they going to haze me? Are they going to make everyone else stop talking to me? Because that's what social shaming is. I played in Japan for a year. I know what it's like to be socially shamed on a team. And... <laughs> Um, but it was a beautiful experience for me to catch myself and say, oh, wait, I see the pattern here. And instead of saying, oh, gosh, what a, what a horrible pattern that this, I'm owed something, as the victim archetype would say. Mm -hmm. It was, oh, wow, I now see from those experiences that I really am a magician. And it gave me clarity in that and gratitude by being able to see, oh, I now understand that all of those experiences were an initiation for me to move into the empowered and awakened magician. That as painful as all of them were, they were necessary steps. Mm -hmm. And the shadow archetype is a nasty one and it feeds and it's very mm -hmm. strong. And a lot of times it can suck the positive experiences and memories out of it and really amplify the bad experiences. And that's very true. I can look back on a lot of my times in the NBA and I don't really, by habit now, I don't recall a lot of the positive memories because mm -hmm. that shadow side of the heartbreak mm -hmm. when I was dismissed in 2008 after the economy collapsed in August um, has siphoned so much of that energy to amplify its own story and narrative that I was betrayed. Mm -hmm. And so being able to work with people and help them understand that the survivor archetypes, while necessary for a time in our upbringing and help us make sense of the world, they still, um, they possess a lot of power and they can very much rob us and hamstring us of a healthy adult experience where they continue to run a narrative that does not allow you to see the beauty of the initiation in, in, in the integration of who you truly are, truly are. I think that's fascinating, Lance. So what happened is like the, um, as the shadow archetype started to take over, you called out for your archetypal grounding. You called out for the magician. And, you, and so your feet started digging into the ground. Mm -hmm. You could sense the yeah. outside danger coming towards you. You could feel that it's ripping things out of you, that it's making you feel very, very uncomfortable, very kind of like dismissed, feeling like, how could they treat me this way? This is terrible. I've been doing this for them. But you called out for the magician archetype. And you said, well, you know, I'm the magician archetype. And so by calling out to it, you're basically pushing the shadow back into its place, mm -hmm. right? You recognize that it's overwhelming you and you needed balance. Mm -hmm. And so you, so calling that out was the, what you called it was beautiful. You called it grounding. It grounded you. It made you connect back to um, your archetypal energy, your whole archetypal energy and not pieces of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was very well said, or uh, Lahav, that it was robbing me of the remainder of my experience there. Yeah, yeah. I was in service. I had given a lot of my time and my money to get up there to be yeah. in service. And when I'm in service, you don't do service for a handout. Yeah. And so it's like part of you came up. Oh wow, I came up all the way here to be this, and they would go out of their way to make me feel unwelcome. Yeah. Um, that was a narrative that was happening. Uh -huh. And instead, the magician was, I had to really ground the magician. It was, okay, I see clearly now that as magician, I stress systems. Mm 
Yeah. With my hearing loss on my size and the magician archetype, I greatly stress systems, even when I'm not trying to. And I can say, oh, yeah, that allows me to always feel betrayed and whatnot. But the magician archetype as a whole on the macro level has a very strong betrayal narrative from yes. the medieval uh, uh, inquisitions yes. to the age of enlightenment. Um, the magician has been burned at the stake, beheaded, lots of things have been happening, that the narrative of betrayal is very strong at the macro and therefore is strong at my individual micro level. Yeah. And being able to catch that and stop and say, oh, wait, nope, this is now me going through initiation into an awakening, understanding that what a beautiful gift that I have to be able to go into systems, quickly recognize and understand them. But as I as they are pushing back on me and triggering me, I realize that I am also giving them a gift as they're giving me a gift to help me move out of shadow. Each time they make me feel mm -hmm. betrayed, I can catch it and move out of shadow, recognizing my magician archetype in the light or the empowered state. I am also giving them a gift by making them slightly uncomfortable, which is forcing them to broaden their horizons and understanding and be more open and compassionate as well. Um, and so that's very much uh, true in how you, you labeled it and described it as far as what that experience was for me and me being able to catch it and recognize, yes, okay, this is the magician archetype moving out of the victim uh, sidecar that it has been operating with for far too long well you, you well, and I, go ahead, I think Christine. well I think it's it's important for people to understand that this is something you've studied for a long time Lance the magician archetype the victim the survival archetypes <coughs> excuse mm. me and that is what you're going to be teaching because there's people who will be watching this going well, well what is that and where do I learn that Right. That's what this conference is about, is, is giving people a map of what is an archetype, what is a pattern, mm -hmm. how do I recognize my own archetype, mm -hmm. how do I recognize the light and shadow, the power and strength within each one of us, mm -hmm. so we can have a larger vista of how to move in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and you've so, had yeah. a lifetime of experience to do that. Um, yeah, uh, seeing these survivor archetypes transcend cultures. Um, the archetypes transcend cultural boundaries, and that's why I believe they are a universal language. And whether you're in Japan, Puerto Rico, or whatnot, I recognize mm -hmm. your archetypal patterns. Mm -hmm. They transcend culture. Mm -hmm. And so I'll be able to, when I'm doing a keynote, I'll be able to walk people briefly through some of the languaging that you hear these survival archetypes say. So like a big one, the victim archetype that I said to myself at this event when I was feeling... Uh, oh, great. They're setting me up to abandon me and betray me again. It was, here we go again. Mm. Yeah. That's a yeah. common phrasing within the victim archetype psyche. Here we go again. The looping. Yep. Yeah. That's also part of the, that's also part of the betrayed magician, right? So what yes. you did was you recognize the shadow by saying, wait a second, that's the betrayal Yes, that's part of the magician. Yes, it's getting to me. Oh, yes, yes, that's getting to me. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, let me pull myself back. Let me recollect. Yeah. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. This is, I know where this is coming from. I can, I can, I don't need to stand there. I can stand here, take a breath. Let's, let's take it back. And so every time you recognize the part of the shadow, you took a piece back. Mm -hmm. Every time you said, that's the betrayal piece of the magician. They've been betrayed in the past. You took it back. You said, oh, that's mine. That's not theirs. They're not betraying me. That's my part of the shadow. Mm -hmm. So that's part of our collective shadow is the feeling of betrayal, right? So, yes. mm -hmm. and then it takes a personal nuance in your life. How were you yes. betrayed? Like I'm sure all three of us can talk of different ways that we felt betrayed and how it oh, yeah. really hurt, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, 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 I wanted to emphasize how all these pieces that Lance is talking about are actually part of the same piece, part of the same archetype. Mm -hmm. He's just picking out what Christy talked about, which was the patterns. 
here, look at this pattern. Okay, this is my pattern. Okay, this is my negative pattern in the world. Okay, come over here. You're next to me. Don't stray. Yeah. <laughs> Don't stray. I know I like you. I feel safer when you're sitting next to me. <laughs> Don't go out there. Then you start yelling at me, and I don't. And then you say, yeah. "I don't want you out there." <laughs> Agreed. Um, mm. I think it's important to uh, people recognize we. There's a lot of narrative going back and forth. That oh, if I vibrate at such a high frequency, nothing will bother me. Mm. Uh, we're still human. And instead of holding ourselves to an impossible standard that I should never ever be triggered. It is, how quickly can I recover? That is how I define, that's the metric I use to define if I'm moving towards emotional and spiritual health. Yeah. How quickly can I recover when I am triggered, when I am spiraling? Yeah. Acknowledging that until the day I die, I will always be activated or bothered. And it's it may just take me 30 seconds to pull myself together yeah. instead of two, three days. Yeah. Um, or I two, think, three years. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's important. I think that's something that we are also emphasizing here. The archetypal work is not about um, getting a certificate or a plaque on the wall that says, oh, uh, I'm a wise Zen teacher now and I can mm -hmm. share this message with everybody because I took the course. It's no, it is a continual initiation throughout life as you work mm -hmm. on integrating the archetypes within your psyche mm -hmm. into one cohesive operating organism, really. Yeah. And if we pull back the pieces and we situate them in their rightful place, we are actually, um, we talk about this and we've talked about it in the archetypal course. Um, you're embodying the archetype. Yeah. When you sit yeah. at the center and you have all the pieces that Lance um, recognized were too far away from him. He's like, oh, no, that's mine. Let me bring that in. Because it's too easy to project out into the crowd and look at them and say, okay, who of you is going to betray me? Well, right. it could be anybody. Right. <laughs> the shadow says all of them are going to betray All me. of them. There was a point there where I was like, you know what? They're all talking about me. For like two minutes, I was back in my adolescent brain yeah. thinking, oh my gosh, you're talking about me. And I know they're just either going to be more brutal to me or also going to ask me never to come back. Yeah. And it was like, it was, it was, wow. I had not spiraled that deeply in a long, long time. But something you were kind of alluding to, Lahav, is that okay, I've done enough work and I have enough resources within me now that I can stop it and I can recognize it and how, how quickly can I re re rein this back in, move it out of shadow. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important that you do have to have these blowouts like this mm -hmm. of course. for that shadow to be like a bad zit, just have a blowout and then you say oh wow that's thank goodness that is now out of the system to such a large degree obviously the shadow will always be doing its dance with us but to have the blowouts i don't think there's any shame in that i think they're necessary from time to time yeah oh yeah they're necessary for us to see them and yes. say who the hell was that what just happened it's really when yes. we're able to check ourselves yeah when we're when we put ourselves in situations where um, where shadow can take place, where shadow starts to whisper, I think the whispering in my ear sometimes is more of you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Stop talking. <laughs> so yeah. like yeah, uh, like I recognize shadow, like I recognize it, and then I walk that's away. Your and, oh, that's really hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, saboteur. That's a saboteur. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I've done that a lot. Very strong. It becomes very, very strong. It becomes a pull for me. And in the past, that was my modus operandi, mm -hmm. where I would sabotage the relationship instead of continuing on because it was too uh, emotionally triggering for me. Mm -hmm. And so that took, took a while to kind of work through. Mm -hmm. But when I hear that voice, I know where that voice is from. And that I know that voice needs to be closer to me instead of far away from me. So when Lance talks about 
how we move out of shadow it's actually by pulling back mm -hmm. shadow within us yeah we pull it towards us and that's how we move out because once it separates itself from us it starts talking at us and we become the puppet on the string it starts telling us what is going on and lance was describing it beautifully for a couple of minutes it had me going it, it wanted me to go somewhere it wanted me to do something it wanted me to like scream at them. It wanted me, but then suddenly it's like, oh, I see you. Come back here. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go there. Yeah. Well, that's a key uh, phrase. I see you because our conference is about you don't wow. see. Me. Yeah. So you can't see me. Yes. You will learn at the conference how to recognize some of those shadows and how to understand it in a different way, understand yourself in a new way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And without, you know, giving, I'll, I'll go into this more in the keynote, but recognizing too, the survivor archetypes are actually quite brilliant. Mm -hmm. They're very intelligent. Yeah. As a means of yeah. survivor. Yeah. They're magician so, shadows, by the way. Yes. That's why you like, yeah. because they are the ultimate survivor archetype. Mm -hmm. And so your saboteur archetype that says, shut up, you don't know how to talk about it, is self preservation. Mm. And so it's saying, if I don't, if I'm not seen, I will be safe. Yeah. Yeah. Until it no longer serves you at a point. Yeah. That we are here to be seen. We are here to integrate. But and so I think it's important that we move out of shaming the shadow or mm. the survivor archetypes by saying, thank you for protecting me as long as you did, but your services are no longer required. Yeah. Now, it's interesting is, uh, I think that this topic is timely. I think that um, I think you you will have a very um, a large audience to hear your message. I think it's very clear of why we need to know. Why mm -hmm. why do we need to know? Why why are these hooks in us? Why are they pulling us? Why are they tearing at our our flesh? Why are they pulling us in those directions? Why are they trying to scare us? Why are they trying to push us in front? Why are they pulling us back? Why are they telling us not to do that or do that? Where is that coming from? Where is that voice coming from? And I think that's one of the things that Lance will kind of um, shine a light on is. And asking her, why do we care? Why do we need to know? It's also about moving us out of destructive, repetitive loops. Yeah. And I think everybody wants that. Like, how do I move out of these toxic relationships that keep happening? Why me? Why me? Why me? Why does, why does this keep happening? Mm -hmm. the victim asked that. Why me? Why does this keep happening? Oh, here we go again. Um, but not understanding that the victim keeps recreating that self fulfilling prophecy because it keeps giving it more juice. And that eventually becomes your whole identity. That becomes like a parasite. And so people wouldn't play the victim if they weren't getting something out of it. You get enough feedback on social media where people saying, oh, you're right, you're wrong, you were wrong, you deserve your retribution, your pound of flesh, etc." If people weren't getting that kind of feedback, they would stop playing the victim. And so it becomes parasitic in a way. But again, is it fulfilling? No. It's satisfying for a moment, but is it fulfilling? No. And so really helping people understand why are we doing this is because, okay, do you want to have healthier relationships? Do you want to have a healthier dynamic in your current relationship? Or maybe it might help you realize it's time to say goodbye to this relationship as mm -hmm. you are going to consciously choose to evolve into more mutually respectful relationships where you equally see each other at a more proactive level rather than again the surviving level so much fabulous mm, information that's going to be shared it sounds like yeah yeah, yeah we're looking forward that. to it lance we're looking forward to you speaking um we did a course together uh, with christy and lance we did a course on the archetypes um, um discussing how they present themselves what uh, how to recognize them how to 
We will also be at the conference as a group to talk about archetypal patterns and how the archetypes move in the world. So you'll get to see Lance individually and then you'll get to see Lance in our group as we present on um, the archetypes because the archetypes are, are not a singular in nature. Um, they are, um, there are multiples and they have very different faces, yet their energy, their vibration, as Lance puts it, their vibration pulls them together and mm -hmm. holds them together. And that's why in Lance's conversation about the shadow and the betrayal and the magician and how the magician has been betrayed and how that's a piece of the shadow, you could see all these pieces. They're all part of the archetype but they have different faces. And so when you're looking at them, you're like, oh, that's gotta be childhood. Oh no, that's adulthood. But you lose context when you're trying to pin them to a point in time instead of what they're doing now. Right. Mm. Because that's when you get, that's when you become possessed. So if Lance had fallen back and sat there and just reminisced about his most difficult days for the next like six hours, that's when that possession would take over. So he talked about how he felt that possession for about two minutes. It kept going and going. And it's like, no, no, <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah. You shake loose. You're like, hands off. To be honest, to be honest, it's probably about almost two hours that I was oh, smiling. Oh, sure, yeah. I mean, we. That's still not bad. Long, yeah. Two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I did. That's I not did, bad. I, I say two minutes because I'm quoting you, but I, I yeah. realize how long it really takes, mm -hmm. and how much, how much energy and power that is needed to be generated to reintegrate that energy oh, and yeah. power. Is light stopping? Can I stop a rolling car that's gaining inertia? and stop yeah. it and literally push it back the other direction. That honestly, it felt like that much physical exertion to really pull myself together. Well, thank I you. I think sometimes it takes that much. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, Christy. Yeah. Um, Christy, do you have any more thoughts um, you would like to talk mm -hmm. to? Lance, I'd like to ask you, and it's a big question for a short answer, but how, as you've learned about the archetypes and the value in that, um, how has it best served you in your, in your life today? My relationships, every single relationship is healthier. Hmm. And some relationships are completely done. But I acknowledge those relationships and what they taught me and realizing Archetypally speaking, the dance is fulfilled, is complete mm -hmm. with that person. Mm -hmm. I learned what I needed to learn. And therefore, that's a healthy, healthy relationship because it is now yeah. done. There's no longer dragging on and keep repeating the, the drama with each other. But also, it allows me to see, okay, my relationship with family and siblings and whatnot that used to trigger me. It allows me to focus and watch them and recognize their archetypes. And if I focus yeah. on seeing them, because we humans want people to see us. When's someone going to see me? When's someone going to recognize me? When's someone going to truly value me? Which is a completely understandable human need. But as soon as I started focusing on better understanding my siblings, they naturally just soften to me. Mm. Yeah. That they began to see me as an individual, no longer the baby brother. Because, you know, when you're the youngest and you go on this journey and you have all these things you want to share me, but still in a family dynamic, what the hell do I know? I'm the youngest. I need to know my place. Mm -hmm. And instead of them needing them to just see and acknowledge, it's like, okay, I see, I see the queen there in my sister. I see the warrior in my brother. I see the lover in my other sister. Mm -hmm. And instead of like, again, trying to get them to see the magician I have in me, it's like, oh, but I see them and I right. can honor them. Mm -hmm. 
and in turn, when while the archetypes naturally have clashes with each other, um, in the shadow side, on the positive side, they naturally have alliances with each yes. other. Yes, for sure. And so when I focus on them, I see them, and I see the beauty that they give to the family system. Mm. It allows me to honor them, and therefore the tension just naturally disappears. It's not like they consciously just say, oh, you know what, there's blah, blah, blah. It's subconsciously, they, the, there's no longer that tension of, are you going to see me first? Who's going to, who's going to mm. say uncle first? Mm-hmm. But instead of viewing it as like a competition of scarcity, yeah. It's being able to see, hey, we're all in this as a team dancing archetypally and we can um, fall apart from the inside or we can support each other in our strengths. And I see their strengths and that allows me to honor them. And just by that, they naturally now honor me, even though they don't consciously know what I did. And that's okay. It's a beautiful human echo. Can you see me? Because the archetype is always saying in the background, you can't see me. So the natural Mm. human response always is, can you see me? Can you hear me? And what the, what, that's the echo of the archetype. You can't see me. You can't hear me. When you're able to see it and hear it, suddenly the archetypal energies as Lance described them, start to flow. Yeah. Instead of there is a battle, there's a battle through shadow. They're actually, they start to flow. They actually start to work together. Mm -hmm. I would say that is the blessing with astrological and archetypal work that has really allowed me to be a better sibling. Mm -hmm. It's allowed me to be a better sibling. And not yeah. them to be better siblings to me because it's no longer important if they're better siblings to me. That's really powerful, Lance. Yeah. Thank you. And I think I really believe that people can learn that and and have that gift for themselves because that is the gift, yeah. family and collectively with everyone we meet, especially in today's world. Yeah. It's so important we start to see things less personal and um have have a better way to see people in general without attaching to what they think or what they say but what's what's the bigger picture that's happening and so we don't do that shadow dance back and forth of being right i'm right and you're wrong Mm. and you started with your family and your intimate friends to your work to you know i just think that's that's a gift that we can all share Mm -hmm. and people are going to learn that when they come I think what you're saying is when you say less personal, that's exactly how we integrate the shadow. We make it less Mm. personal because that's what Hans did, right? And that's what you're talking about. Make it less personal because the more personal it is, the bigger the monster grows. You can't see the constellation. Yeah. If you You start feeding the fire, you start throwing more logs on the fire. You're like, oh, I'm done for (laughs) <laughs> yeah and it moves fast yes well yeah for sure it's very fast for sure well thank you lance i'm excited that you're going to join us yes we're, we're very excited we're always very offer. excited to have you bro you're a superstar without you where we don't see the the sky at night you know that right i appreciate that thank yeah you. absolutely so um with me, as always, my two dear friends, uh, Christy Foster and Lance Allred. And uh, we will be at, um, in Salt Lake City, Utah, on the 14th, 15th, and 16th. Come see us. Um, come see Lance. He's going to be talking about archetypes. Um, he also has an amazing mind around um, astrology and um, um astrological what do you call it Lance? oh i just do archetypal astrology as well archetypal it. astrology yeah. um and you should come see christy also uh christy's going to be presenting on soma she's going to be presenting on the body um how archetype archetypes move the body 
And I think as you start to hear the different speakers talk about the different aspects of the archetype, you will start to see pieces of a puzzle coming together. Mm -hmm. And the picture, the image, uh, the symbol starts to become more and more clear to what are we looking at? Because the archetypal pattern is you can't see me. Yeah. So we are going to endeavor with respect to the archetypal patterns. We're going to endeavor Thank you. <laughs> to show them in all their splendor mm -hmm. at this conference. So Lance, thank you so much. Christy. Yeah, thank Cohen, you, Lance. Thank you. And join us for the IFC's conference in Salt Lake City on the 14th, 15th, and 16th of October of 2022. We, um, we will be very excited to welcome you. We are hosting it live and in person. It hasn't been really in person for a couple of years now. So we are back live. We're actually, you can see humans instead of uh, cameras and video screens. We will have a video screen. We will have a camera. But yeah. for those who could join us in person, we'd love to have them. Thank you to you both. And thank uh, you. See you soon.